and I'm humbled and honored to receive this recognition here today. And, you know, it's especially nice that I'm able to look around and see so many familiar faces, judges, attorneys, role models, and mentors, and other members of the San Diego legal community who have made today and this very eventful year possible for me and for my family. 2022 is very special uh, to me but today I wanted to focus on two other dates and events. Uh, first, 1979. So many of you know, 1979 was the year that San Diego La Raza Lawyers Association was formed with really just a handful of Latino attorneys. And now our membership, its membership, has reached over 300 Latino lawyers who are practicing law in San Diego County and members of the judiciary as well. And in addition to that, San Diego La Raza Lawyers Association is one of around 18 affiliate associations that serve now several thousand Latino lawyers throughout the state of California. So you've come a long way since 1979 and you should be proud, so thank you for that. But also, um, it's important to remember that more work still needs to be done. The recent state bar stats indicate that uh, Latinos are especially underrepresented. And although we make up about 36% of the state's population, uh, we make up only about 6% of the licensed attorneys in California. So remember, together we can make important strides and continuing to improve those statistics. And I encourage all of you to continue to support this organization's mission by offering a community, a community of San Diego Latino attorneys. And also, I encourage you to form broader connections with those who support and encourage the members of our community. Another date I would like to reflect on is 1982. Some of you weren't born. I know there's students in the audience. 40 years ago. Uh, February of this year was the 40th anniversary of the late Justice Cruz Reynoso's appointment as the first Latino of the State Supreme Court of California. I recently spoke at an event in Sacramento. San Diego is my favorite, by the way. But I recently <laughs> spoke <laughs> at an event um, and I referenced Secretary Luis Cespedes remarks about Justice Reynoso's really remarkable character. And so I'd like to share those with you. Uh, Secretary Cespedes indicated and explained that Justice Reynoso has lived a life of humility, empathy, courage, intelligence, and an unwavering commitment to judicial independence which is the cornerstone of our democracy and of justice for all. I was 10 years old when Justice Reynoso was appointed, and I never would have dreamed someone like me from such humble beginnings could stand before you accepting this recognition, and hopefully, if all goes well in November, serving the public as the next Chief Justice of the State of California. <laughs> And as I look out upon this audience, I am mindful of something that I will never forget. And that's that I did not get here alone. I'm here because of the sacrifices and the struggles of my grandparents and of my parents. And I'm here because others like so many of you here in this, um, I was gonna say room, but we're in this outdoor setting, <laughs> amazing outdoor setting. So many of you have helped to pave the way. So I thank you. I thank you for your support. And I ask that you continue through your own example to inspire others as, as you have inspired me. To lead a life of public service, to promote this organization's mission by supporting our community, and to carry forward the legacy of equality and achievement that was championed by Justice Reynoso. And finally, I, I'm thrilled to receive this recognition, but I also know the Judge of the Year is a really in some ways a misnomer 
It takes all of our combined efforts to protect and enhance a fair and impartial judiciary. So I accept this award in recognition for all of our combined efforts, past, present, and future. Thank you.